Today on Houston Life, after a huge ninth inning for the Houston Astros last night, the Strohs are moments away from hitting the field once again. We are live in Boston ahead of Game 5. Plus, cheers to Wine Club Wednesday, poured by HEB. We're sipping a red blend, sure to be a slam dunk for any occasion. Then we'll meet a local teen who is lighting up his neighborhood in a rather spooky way. Find out where you can see this Halloween light show for yourself. And the tiny Texas town that has become a staple for antiques and rare finds. We'll have all the details on this year's fall show in Roundtop. All that happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Halfway through the week. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Houston Life on this Wednesday, October 20th, 2021. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Lauren Kelly. And for Courtney today, who was in Roundtop on a fun little assignment. It's a great assignment. You know, they do the big show in the spring and then one in the fall. The fall show is happening now, and she had to make her way over there. I think she kind of put in a request for this assignment because this assignment is right <laughs> down Courtney's Apollos Lane. Yeah, we joked earlier she's going to have to rent a trailer to drive <laughs> all of her, her goodies, all of her, her finds findings, back. Yeah. So listen. We've got to chat about our Astros and the game last night, game four against the Red Sox in Boston. Oof. They tied up the series, and you know, the first few innings, we were all feeling, you know, we were a point behind and feeling a little bit stressed out. Uh, oh, but yeah. wow, it really worked out for the Astros in a very big way. I mean, they kept the score quite low throughout the entire game. It was one of those games you literally had to wait until the very end to make sure that we got that win. That's why I love baseball yeah. so much, though, because things can turn on a dime right and yep. as Courtney's always said like it's a whole new ball game yeah we were as as usual stress texting each <laughs> other during the game like what's happening look closely she's saying the Lord is testing me today and then at that point once things turned we this were is like you and Courtney's conversation right? this is okay. yes this was our conversation <laughs> and I think all of those you know oh, emojis sort of speak for themselves <laughs> <laughs> boom let's go <laughs> it was a good time. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're going to do it again today. How about I, it? I sure hope so. You know, the series is tied at 2-2. Two and two. We have one more in Boston. Then we come back to Houston. And I feel like once we get back here, it's a, it's a different level. You know, the guys really feel the crowd. They feel the juice box. It just all comes together. Well, I also wonder about the players adapting to the different climate, yeah. right? Because clearly here in Houston, it's a little bit warmer of than course. it is in Boston. And so just adapting to that alone when you're not on your home turf. I mean, they really pulled it out last night. I agree with you. When they come home, though, hopefully the crowd support will make it that much easier to take home the W. Definitely. I love your jacket today. It looks so good. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm giving it to my buddy, Brandon, after oh. today's show. But, you know. <laughs> You oh, know. I didn't know there was a list. I could have put a request in. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, after last night's incredible Game 4, Game 5 of the ALCS is, of course, about to get underway in Boston. And our Keith Garvin is there with the latest. Yesterday, uh, he hadn't tied his shoes. He had he, some hot dogs. He had some hot dogs. <laughs> he was out there. Uh, but I believe we're going to be going to him right now. Keith, did you tie Yay. your shoes today? Yes. <laughs> okay. I did, yes. Give a look. Show the shoes, Adrian. Yes, I tied them today because, look, so I, I usually don't tie them, but because the Astros weren't winning, I decided to tie them, and I think that might be one of the keys to why they won. Okay, I switched it up on you a little bit. So, hey, we are outside of Fenway, uh, the oldest baseball park in all of baseball. Really, really is an amazing place. I really want to show you guys what's going on here. We're at uh, Brookline and also at Jersey Street. And take a look. This is Fenway right here. We got, we got the hot dog stands, you know. Man, they have some good hot dogs out here. And if you take a look a little bit further down the street, you can see... In Houston, this is what we call Street Fest, but here in Boston, they've been doing this since 1912. This is actually just called Yaki Way. This is where all the fans come, and there you can hear the live music and all that good stuff. And then, of course, you cannot have a baseball game. You can't. You cannot have a baseball game. You cannot come to a stadium without peanuts, right? Where are the, the peanuts? Love it. Yeah, these are salted, and, and you got a bell, right? You got to ring the bell out here. My gosh, yes, my man Nikki. We got my man Nikki right here. Nikki, get, Nikki sold us some great peanuts. You, you, you can't do baseball without without peanuts, right? Uh, peanuts and baseball, that's the way to go. Uh, lately, though, I think the peanut generation has changed. Uh, 
the de degeneration of the peanut eaters, uh, it seems like they're dw dwindling. No more peanut eaters. D dwindling down. Everybody's interested in other things now, but we want to bring back the peanut eaters. That's okay. I love the peanuts, yeah. Mickey. I, I love Not the peanuts. Like it was in the old days. This cot used to be stacked like this. Wow. We're stacking them high and we're selling them cheap. Okay. Well, you, you got some for me. You got yes, some for me. Yes, okay. We still love got it. Loyal peanut eaters. We do. We do. I appreciate it. I'm, right. I'm, I'm going to enjoy. Okay. Everybody's we interested in that. Other things. Other things, but I, I I like the peanuts. All right, check it out. We also have Astros fans. Hey, how goes it? We have Jim, Jim, Mike, 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 Mike and Mike, and we have Jamie and Angie. And Angie, okay, guys, you got where? Where are you guys from? Uh, we're from Port Natchez. Okay, from Port Natchez. But your Astros fans, how are you guys feeling about tonight? Super excited. We're gonna take home the win, bring it back to Minute Maid. You, I, I talked to you last night, actually. How awesome was last night and seeing the Astros get back on track? Phenomenal. I mean, all those hits in the ninth inning was awesome to watch. My man, you, what do you, what do you think about tonight? What do you think about the chances of going back to the World Series? It's a good pitchers matchup tonight, and uh, hopefully, you know, we get the hits we got to have to uh, come through. So I feel good about it, man. We're going to go back and just have to win one game in Houston. Okay, one word from the other mic. I just say this is our first time to Boston, and you hear all the things about the, the fans and how rough it is and being in the belly of the beast here as, as a visiting fan, but it's been great. The it's fans, been great. The fans here have been excellent, nice. They, they, they put us put it up with us a little bit, but uh, we gave it back, and that was all. That's how it should be. You know, it wasn't bad at all. For sure. Good sportsmanship. Okay, now you you don't want to say anything, but you can give me a go Strohs, right? Come on, go Strohs. Go Strohs. All right, there we go. Okay, all right. We got These are just four of the few fans that are out here to see the Astros hopefully win tonight. We know they're coming back to Houston for at least one more game. We want them to win tonight and only have to win one more game in Houston. You guys have a good one. I'm going to enjoy these peanuts. Yeah, enjoy those peanuts. I'm shocked to hear the folks in Boston don't love them as much as we do down here in Houston. Hmm. I mean, I take know. me out to I the can, ball I game. I go to a baseball game and not eat peanuts. Well, as the song goes, right, buy me some peanuts yeah. and Cracker Jacks. So there you go. Jacks, I'm looking for the Cracker Jacks. So I, I, when I find the Cracker Jacks, I'll let you know. <laughs> All right, Keith. You have a good time out there and go Strohs. If you want to cheer on the Strohs as they head back to Minute Maid Park, breaking news, folks. <gasps> We have a chance for you to actually go watch the game Ooh, in person. We are giving away yeah. another set of tickets to one of our KPRC2 insiders, a chance to watch Friday's game right here in Houston. Now, if you haven't signed up to be an insider yet, this is a really good reason to do it, probably the best reason. It's totally free, and you can sign up by visiting our website, clicktohouston.com slash insider, or just scan the QR code on the bottom left corner of your screen. There it is right there. And if you're lucky enough to score some tickets, I am sure that you are showing off your fandom. You yeah. know what that is, right? Yeah, the fandom, the there gear. There you go. Gloria Mata Ludecki sent in this photo. She and her fellow employees are prepping for the game. Oh, they look fantastic. This next pick is from Brooke Aguero, future Astros player right there. That's what the caption says. Go Astros. <laughs> and as always, we love seeing how our furry friends are getting in on this action. This is Don Donahue, Zach's poodle, sporting the Astros gear. <laughs> okay, look at that. With a little fringe on the bottom. I know, I love the fringe. Well, and Zoe and Minnie got in on the action as well, right? Well, <gasps> Zoe was not really having it, but I I got at least Minnie to sit down next to our Jose Altuve candle and smile for one picture, and then she just wanted to run around and, and put the candle in her mouth. So, oh my so gosh, <laughs> Minnie is so adorable. <laughs> Zoe as well. Well, Thank keep you. sending in those photos. You can uh, post them on our Houston Life Facebook page. All right, so I know it is Astros fever right yes. now, and rightfully so. We are all cheering on our Astros, but folks. How about the Rockets? Oh, yeah. It's a brand new season of basketball, right. and Mayor Turner has proclaimed Friday, this Friday, October 22nd, as Houston Rockets Day. That day, of course, is the home opener against Oklahoma City at Toyota Center. So check this out. This is a shot of his Twitter page. Okay. If you all want to find some discounted ticks to Friday's game, I thought it was like a typo. Tickets are not expensive at all. I mean, you can get great tickets for like 37 bucks. Oh, Rockets games are so, so much fun. They're I love going so there. much fun. And Toyota Center, I mean, I feel like every seat, because it's not a massive arena, right. every seat is almost like having a front row seat. Oh, yeah. So check out Mayor Sylvester Turner's uh, Twitter page. Follow that link. Okay. And I'm not sure what the percentage off is, but normally tickets that go for 50 bucks or 37.50. So it's a great deal. Yeah. And again, the home opener against Oklahoma City, it's a great way to 
get out and support uh, our rockets. And the Astros have some great gear, but the rockets have some really cool H-Town gear. Too. I know. I've got to get some of their latest stuff. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Still to come on Houston Life. Goodbye, hot girl summer. Hello, sad girl fall. How Adele is helping us all channel our emo side this season. And Courtney is out in Round Top doing a little shopping at the Fall Antique Show. We're going to be checking with her when Houston Life returns in just two minutes. There she is. Oh, she found a cocktail. <laughs> of course she did. <laughs> Uh, it has now been five days since Adele's brand new song was released. Did you watch it on YouTube? Oh my God, I probably gave in at least a million views. Yeah. <laughs> probably the one that put in a million views. Lauren Kelly alone. <laughs> well, so far, check this out, 89 million views. And all kinds of folks were posting about it. I, I mean, all over Instagram. You can watch yeah. the video on YouTube. It really is a beautiful song. And I think for a lot of people, this resonates. It Go Easy On Me is the title. And yeah. whether you are a parent or a spouse or you know, you're coming out of a failed marriage, whatever it is, yeah. it's sort of like this message that everyone deserves grace. Go easy on me, you we're all just doing the best we can. I saw a little people compare it to just basically the state that we're all in, coming out of a pandemic, just like as the world is healing, let, just go easy on me. So yeah. it was just really nice, I love the song. Well, what do you think? And I think it's beautiful, yeah. it is beautiful. I've never seen Adele in concert, Brandon no. has, he says she's hilarious. You've seen her in concert as well, right? Let me tell you something, she is one of those people that sounds exactly Exactly the same, if not better, in a full live performance venue. Her voice is absolutely magnificent. It is like listening to the most wonderful singer in the world. She was fantastic. It is incredible. It's incredible. Also, there's this really funny um, like skit that she did, she was involved in, where they put prosthetics on her. They sort of oh, dressed yeah. her up to not be Adele yes. with all these other Adele Adele's. like lookalikes. Yes. And they all sang, and then she sings at the end. Anyway, you got to find it online if that you haven't is seen a it. Great it's a one. great video. Yeah, I really, really like that one. It's a really good, good one to bring back for sure. But let's bring in Joe Sam with our question of the day. What's going on, Joe? Hey, you guys. So, you know, it doesn't matter how long Adele takes a break. Whenever she comes back with new music, we all just love her, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, love Adele. We want to hear from you guys. What's something that you recently rediscovered that you still love doing? And we have those answers coming in right now from our Facebook viewers. They're giving us those great answers. Sarah, she writes in, golf. I played as a teen, didn't play at all while raising a family. You know, you're busy doing that. Mm -hmm. and have picked it up with my hubby now that our boys are out of the house. So yeah, it's a good old activity. And we have Pamela, she writes in, going to drive-in movies. Oh. We see a lot of people doing that, that's right? It's very nostalgic. Oh, that's a good one, Pamela. One more comment we have coming in from Kay. She writes in, my grandmother taught me to embroider when I was 10 oh. years old. Yeah, I picked it back up in 2020 and start selling my creations to others. So this is something really cool for a lot of people oh. to... That and is it, nice. Some nice products, right? Yeah. Of course, we want you guys to head over to the Houston Life Facebook page and join that conversation. We'll share your comments a little later on the show. What's something that you guys did before that you just rediscovered and you loved it back when you used to do it? Remember when I did the Disney on Ice and they let me figure skate with Moana? <laughs> right. I think figure skating, I really should practice, but practice I would more. love picking it back up. You, well, at Discovery Green, the ice will be oh, open yeah. in go. just a yeah. couple months. I, I would do that because I ice skated as a kid. Let's do a couple, <laughs> let's do the couple skate. We all need to do that. <laughs> we'll just hold right. hands while going down the ice. That yes. sounds a bit advanced. <laughs> uh, my, my knitting needles and my yarn, they are still in a box at home. And also my little KitchenAid mixer, I haven't baked cookies in the longest time. Oh. Those are two uh. things I would love to do. I used to do them all the time. And you can and, you bring know, them in so yeah, that we Joe can eat. Yeah, Joe and I and the rest of the uh, team will we'll, 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 for sure test them. What about you, Joe? I used to do poetry back, some slam poetry oh. that I stopped writing, so now I'm getting back into it and starting to perform around Houston a little bit more, too. So I have an upcoming performance in just three weeks that I'm getting ready for. So, oh, yeah. we're going to have to come Come check it out. Hey. Sure. No, oh, I'm ready Joe. for it. We'll have to hear more about that later. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. Absolutely. All right. About Halfway between Houston and Austin, the tiny town of Round Top, Texas, has become a hot spot for antiques. We love this spot so much. The fall show is underway right now, so of course our very own Courtney Zavala had to go check it out. And uh, Courtney, how's it going? 
And Lauren, thanks so much. I am in my happy place. This is what they call the Super Bowl of shopping event. It's not a one day deal, but you got to gear up. At least I'm repping the Astros right after that big win last night. I got my boots on. I'm ready for a day of shopping and here to walk me all through it is the mayor of Round Top, Mark Massey. It's great to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here in Round Top. We're in day five of our two week show spans 15 days total. So this weather has been absolutely incredible. Uh, it's fall. It's festive. It just makes you you want to be here in Round Top and shop outside. It is so wonderful. I mean, for a newbie, I have never been. Let me just throw it out there right now. I'm testifying. <laughs> I've never been during the antique show. I've been to Round Top at various places. If it seems overwhelming for people, I really feel like a weekday is a great way to kind of dip your toes in. But give us some tips maybe for first timers. Sure. For first timers, it's definitely you definitely need more than one day if you can. Uh, there's literally this town explodes from 90 people to over 100,000 people during this two week span. And and the show runs about 20 miles long. So there's so many venues and dealers and incredible finds and places to eat, shop, play, relax, rehydrate, and then rinse, repeat, do it again. So it's you have to be out here in Roundtop. It, it, it is kind of the Grand Central Station of all things design, shopping, antiques. You know, over the years, I think as you've seen, Mark, that the your city of Roundtop has changed so much. I mean, it's growing. Things are open now outside of the antique festival, restaurants, hotels, all kinds of things. Your town is growing, and that's a great story to tell. It is a great story. In this town, I mean, we're trying to kind of keep that character and charm for sure, that fun balance of preserving the old uh, buildings, the history, but also bringing in some new businesses. And uh, it's an incredible small town, so many talented people here. And we're equal distant between Austin and Houston, 90 miles from each of those major cities. And it's just an incredible and easy getaway to a small town that really retains a lot of its character and charm. And we really want to preserve that. Well, you're doing a great job. Thanks so much for your time. I know you're busy running around. <laughs> I'm excited to get shopping, but we are also really excited to share a story with you guys. You know that saying is one man's trash is another man's treasure. And if you're out and about in Round Top looking for one of a kind pieces, New Jersey native Matt White has a 12,000 square foot space filled with unique finds from all around the world. So this copper dormer came off of the Overbrook Mental Institution. My name is Matt White, and we have a company called Recycling the Past. This does architectural salvage, and we formulated another company called the Flop House, which is a shipping container hotel out here in Round Top, all made from salvage. So we do a lot of salvage in the Northeast, around the U.S., old homes, factories, schools. So people will call us that of a job that's coming down the pike. They'll let us know. We'll go check it out and pay them for the salvage rights and take out what we want. It's, uh, it's fun trying to, to show people what you can make out of what somebody else might consider junk or trash. This panel room came from the Doris Duke Estate, a 67,000 square foot house. We're inside of what we call the Round Top Ballroom. It's a building that I designed, I guess, back in 2012. It's a 12,000 square foot um, mothership, you could say, of salvage in the middle of a cow pasture in Round Top, Texas. I was one of those kids who liked Legos and liked Lincoln Logs, but fell in love with the use of containers pretty much as a kid all the way moving forward. I kind of had this idea I wanted to do some cool stuff with containers, and it was really, there was only a few people that were doing anything with them. It's like MTV Cribs. Come on in. So the Flophouse Container Hotel was designed basically using all salvage materials. This countertop is from a bowling alley here in Texas. The wood on the wall is from a, my farm in upstate New York. It's really kind of funny because the cows, there's a couple cows, they come in here, and next thing you know, you get this big old cow head drinking out of the pool. This wood on the ceiling is uh, pallet wood from a whiskey distillery. You can still see the rings from the barrels. I think country living in a, in a term isn't so shabby, you know, it, being able to look at the stars at night, being able to have a little bonfire, to be able to do what you want to do unrestricted, um, which is, to me, is what made Texas so attractive. Round Top is not just this sleepy little town with an antique problem, it has become a year-round destination. The community's amazing, everybody's been wonderful, uh, it's fun, you know, it's just a nice place 
just a nice place to be. And uh, I'm not saying you have to move here. I'm just saying it's still a cool place to come and visit. Wow. I, mean, I want to go. I'm literally taking <laughs> notes right now. So I stumbled into Flophouse on Instagram yeah. a couple years back. And after watching this and learning the, the history, the story about the reclaimed woods that he has incorporated into it. Throughout the hotel rooms. Thing. That's amazing. And don't I you want to just jump right into that pool? Yes. I was cracking up when he said the cow just puts their head in and takes a little sip. Of the pool. I know. <laughs> No I problem, her, right? Yeah. Cows get thirsty too. Yeah. All right, more on Round Top in just a bit. When we come back, we are tasting a red blend in today's Wine Club Wednesday and finding out how we can all get 10% Ooh. off French wine favorites. I love it. And as we head to break, we want to remind you that the MD Anderson Boot Walk to End Cancer is right around the corner. Yeah, happening Saturday, November 6th, people around the world will walk 1.2 miles in their own neighborhoods and track their walk virtually, showing that together we can all give cancer the Boot. Yes, thanks to Lionel Bissell, 100% of funds raised by participants will go directly to advancing MD Anderson's mission to end cancer. There is no registration fee and no minimum fundraising requirement. That is awesome. If you would like to register or to find more information, you can visit MD Anderson slash Bootwalk. Fantastic. Houston Life will be right back. Wednesday, of course, it's happy hour right here in Studio B. And in today's wine club poured by HEB, we are tasting a bottle of red under $15. And Lauren, I'm sure this will be a slam dunk because literally it says the name. slam dunk <laughs> on the label. No, seriously. So that's the name of the wine. And you were just telling me, Lauren, if you had a wine label, it would be called what? Oh my goodness. It would for <laughs> sure be called slam drunk. There you go. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Well, listen, this is a red blend. And let's be honest, a lot of folks, when they shop for Calif or when they shop for wine, uh -huh. they look at the, the price point first. Oh, this is 13 bucks. This right? is literally a slam dunk. It's and they you know, we handed it a glass. It's cool. I like it when it's a cold red blend and that's delicious. I, I know this is slightly chilled. I like slightly chilling uh, my red. So mm -hmm. this one is a blend from California. Loads of red fruit, a little hint of spice. Mm -hmm. uh, but for 13 bucks, it delivers a really big, bold flavor. And I love a blend because I feel like it really kind of pairs with anything. It's very forgiving. Yeah, I find myself saying this is what I like. This is what I like. And it always comes out to be a blend. It's always a red blend. And I have not tried uh, one as good as this one yet. So well, I really like it. And you can, if you, if you like it. A steak then pair it with that mm -hmm. if you are vegetarian like we are at our house veggie kebabs it really does pair with anything so whether it is like a date night or a best friend night or maybe this fall you're just facetiming with your mom or your bff mm -hmm. pop open a bottle so here's a fun fact okay this wine this specific wine is being poured tomorrow at the wine walk oh. at market street this is part of the woodlands wine and food week i People, love that it's event. happening again are you stunned that it's already time for this I festival can't again it. Mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so this is the 16th year of the woodlands wine and food week if you've never been people mark your calendars get out there and go look how beautiful it is this is Lauren. so much fun and you just walk from tent to tent there is so much to taste there's so much to sip and it's beautiful over there by the the uh, woodlands i believe right yeah the market street it is gorgeous market street square and yeah. because it's outside that makes it even better. It's happening tomorrow from okay. 6 to 9 p.m. You essentially just drink and eat, and walk yeah. around. Yeah. 40 wineries, 40 craft breweries. Tickets are still available, can be found and purchased online, wineandfoodweek.com. Also, after you've purchased your tickets for that, okay. don't forget <laughs> that now through October 20th, you can get 10% off French wine oh, yes. during their French wine favorites sale. Just look for the tag on the shelf. You cannot miss it, as always. When you're at HEB, if you have any questions, uh, you can find one of the HEB wine specialists. And it goes through November 2nd. Through November 2nd. Yes. That is right. And uh, as always, if you'd like to join our Houston Life Wine Club poured by HEB, you can visit our website to register. You will have access to exclusive giveaways. You'll even have a chance to be part of our virtual tastings, Lauren. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. And as a reminder, you can find today's featured wine at your local HEB. So good. Only 13 bucks. That's a steal. That's a slam, slam dunk. Slam dunk. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, coming up, we are checking back in with Courtney, who is taking us inside the quaint little spot in the heart of Round Top that has something for everyone. And of course, we will get a check of what is coming up for Channel 2 News at 4, including a new TikTok challenge your teen could be doing. That's uh -oh. when Houston Life returns in two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Life. Derek Shore here along with Lauren Kelly. Yay! All right, so we got to get to more of your comments from today's question of the day. Earlier we asked, what is something that you recently rediscovered you still love doing? And knitting was yours, right, Derek? You know, knitting and baking. <laughs> Anna says, running, I took almost three years off due to pregnancy and postpartum. Hey, that is awesome. And the first couple runs are tough, but once you get back into it, those lungs open up and Definitely. you're good to go. Dawn writes in, crafting. Oh. Dawn, did you make that? That is so cool. So clever. I love spiders, I as know, long I as they're that. fake. <laughs> and Greta says, coloring. Amazon has fantastic grown-up coloring books for stress relief and relaxation. I bought one. Okay, how was it? Greta, I'm so glad you said this to start this conversation because yes. adult coloring Coloring books are a thing. Oh, for sure. I mean, it is so calming and relaxing. You can just, you can wear headphones, you can just chill out and just color, and you know you're going to stay inside the lines unless you've been drinking this lamb dunk wine from HEB, but you know, a great idea. I'm going to be ordering some adult coloring okay. books right after this show. Okay. All right, now let's check in with Andy, Christine, and Justin for a look at what is coming up on the news at 4 o'clock. Hi, friends. I've always wanted to try one of those. So if you see like a little picture from Christine on your desk, just know that That's I'm just trying to get my zen. <laughs> yeah. Just as yeah. long as you stay within not. the lines. It won't That's be right. in the lines. It will definitely not be in the lines. <laughs> I Christine, do like you and me this Friday. <laughs> Done. It's a date. Oh, Deal. <laughs> Love, Christine. That's and wine that. brought to you by HEB. <laughs> Seriously. <Right. laughs> <laughs> Great Good to combo. see you guys. Yeah, so, okay, let's talk about the weather. Oh, my uh, gosh. Let's do it. Hey, yeah. uh, before we get to that, I want to tell you that story that you guys just had about, what, about 10 minutes ago, talking about those container storage places, or the container yeah. hotel out mm -hmm. round top. Oh. So, Brandy and the girls and I were out there a couple mm -hmm. of months ago. Phenomenal. Really? Awesome. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nice. phenomenal. Round Top is this cute little place. They've got juke joints in the evening, good food. And I'm telling you what, the sunrise and sunsets are to die for. I'm going to put up a couple pictures Road up trip. on my Facebook yeah. page if you guys want to see what it looks like. Yeah. Um, it, just as soon as I'm done with here, so check that out. Love it. Cool. Yeah. It'll yes. be, it, it, I loved it. Loved it. Really cool. So anyway, all right, let's talk weather here, guys, shall we? Good looking forecast so far this afternoon. A little warm as well. That's basically been the story the last two days. We knew that would be the case. We're back at, look at this, upper 80s. Uh, uh, Hobby's at 87, 88 in Sugar Land. Galveston's at 85. Up at the big airport, we're sitting at 84 degrees. We've got 82 in Conroe. That's our chilly spot so far this afternoon. Everybody else is going to be seeing a little bit of that late summer sizzle, and I think that'll stick around for the rest of the week. The exact track is showing some showers and thunderstorms that have been developing, but most of that is over towards New Orleans, as we figured it would be, and the front itself is still well off to the west. So, afternoon practices, no, not too bad, still pleasant. We'll see those temperatures slowly fall off this evening and get to mostly clear skies. If you want to check out the uh, Hunter Moon tonight, a good night for that as well. Nice afternoon up in Boston for Game 5. They've got temperatures right now in the mid-60s. Obviously a little warmer for us for the watch party if you headed on down to Minute Maid Park. Next couple hours, no problems either. If you're going to have friends over, I think we'll be fine as we get into the evening. And coming up at 4, we'll talk about those warm watch parties, that late summer heat sticking around for a couple of days. And in the weekend, there's a lot going on across the area. You will be dodging some rain showers and thunderstorms, but it won't cancel your plans. But I'll kind of time things out for you so you can get your weekend plans started because it's, it's hump day. So at this point, we're like, hey, oh, yeah, counting down. I my mean, friend. we've been counting down since Monday. Who, who would joke? <laughs> <It's so true. laughs> I'm loving the 70s in the evening, though, too. Uh, yeah. It's nice. Very All right. pleasant. Justin, thank you. All right, are also coming up at 4 o'clock today, the National Transportation Safety Board now investigating the crash of that plane yesterday near Houston Executive Airport. Everyone on board that flight made it off that plane safely and is doing okay this afternoon. The NTSB holding a news conference later this afternoon, the latest on their investigation that's coming up. And vaccines for kids. The Biden administration rolling out its plan to vaccinate children ages 5 to 11. A look at that strategy that's coming ahead of the FDA's highly anticipated emergency use authorization of Pfizer's vaccine for kids. And doctors now saying a popular social media app may be linked to an increasing problem among teen girls. The app they say is causing them to experience physical and verbal tics. So those stories and much more coming up today at four o'clock. You guys, we hope to see you there. Oh my goodness, Definitely. that does not sound good. We'll be tuning in at four o'clock. We'll see you then. See you Thanks, then. Guys. Well, shifting back to Round Top, 
Okay. It is that time of year. <laughs> Courtney Zavala has been out there enjoying the fall show. She sure has. Courtney, what are you up to now? We have made our way over to Rummel Square, a popular eating and shopping destination here in Round Top. I am standing at Garden Co., but listen, I want to show you something. Right across the way here is Field and Firewater. That is one of the hottest restaurants right now in Round Top. It's all about farm to table, great food, unbelievable patio. But listen, the Garden Co. story all started with a simple nursery. I know it seems weird that Courtney, the one who can't keep a plant alive, is at a nursery, but this this is also one of the best places to buy and shop local. Let's go in. Let's meet Stevie Thompson, who is the owner of Garden Co. Stevie, how are you? Good. How are you? Great. And thank you so much for joining us today. And also, let's talk about the story because y'all really started as a nursery. As a nursery, yeah. We're plant people about 23 years ago um, in Schulenburg. Just right up the road. Um, we do landscape and we sell retail plants and stuff like that. And got started um, in the restaurant business as well. And it just kind of snowballed. Gift shops. We have several different gift shops here and also in Schulenburg. Yeah. Well, I think it's one of those stories that kind of goes hand in hand, right? Nursery. And then you have the restaurant. Yes. And of course, you need little baubles and gifts. Let's talk about the gift items okay. because I was hooked immediately when I walked in the door with my best friend Lori um, with lots of items. And you have one of my favorites right yes. here. Talk to me about the oh, chirpy people. top because everybody it's loves these. Crazy. The chirpy tops, they are probably our most popular item here in the shop. Um, they, and it's a wine aerator, It is right? a wine. It's stainless steel inside, so it's a perfectly good wine aerator. But as you pour it, the bird chirps. So may I? Yes, yeah. let's do it. This is crazy. If that doesn't Ooh, say Garden Co., I don't know what does. But it hooked me, and these are all so great because they're like, what is it? It's $28. Less, yeah, $28. Yeah. It's, it's a great little stocking gift. stuffer, yep, yep. great for a friend. Absolutely. But everything in here, too, really has a story. Let's talk about some of the other items. I know the olive oil is very popular. Olive oil, our balsamic, it's uh, barrel aged. That's out of California. These people actually got into the business by moving ancient olive trees and finding homes for these olive trees and um, then started producing producing the olive oil and then also this balsamic it's crazy good it's just kind of sweet and savory really thick it's wonderful on salads vegetables bread it's amazing but yeah that's also a really popular item what i love about your store too stevie is everything in here has a story whether it's locally sourced for you sure. or it benefits a charity sure absolutely we have a little charity that we work with here out of austin um it's called uh, free leaf um they these guys help women that have been exploited or um, are struggling with, you know, their lives, all of the money goes for these uh, women. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah, women are not for sale. That's their tagline. Well, so. thank you so yeah. much for the tour. I've thank got more shopping to do. I actually Yay. have a pile of stuff right there in the back. So always great thank to connect you. with you. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it. Back to you guys. A pile of stuff in the back. I'm not surprised. Here's my shocked face. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, you got to load up that trailer. I also think that this store is such a great reminder that when you shop locally, when you head, you know, whether it's a boutique here in Houston, whether you head out to Round Top, you're not only supporting that local business, you're supporting all these other local right. businesses where these products are coming from. I love that Courtney's just putting together a list of the things that we're checking off. Like, yep, I'm going to go ahead and get that. I'll go <laughs> yeah. ahead and get that. Thanks for finding that, Courtney. Maybe she'll come back with some of those beautiful plants. <laughs> She's not well. sharing anything with us. Well, I'll help you keep the plants <laughs> alive. How about that? Deal. All right. Now let's check in with Joe Sam, who has a spotlight on a teen's spooky creation. Hey, Joe. Oh, yeah, guys. Still to come, I'll introduce you to the 17-year-old that's lighting up the neighborhood with a special Halloween show. Find out how you can enjoy this haunting experience with the whole family when Houston Life returns. back to Houston Life. You know, you won't have to worry about being afraid of the dark in one Magnolia neighborhood. That's because a local teen I spoke with there has it shining bright with a special themed light show that's going to put you right in the Halloween spirit. Check it out. And shivers down your spine. Forget lighting the jack-o'-lanterns for Halloween. An entire home is getting lit for the season with a show that's sure to creep you out. Everything you see behind you is all built by me. It took a whole year to build it and program the show. 
17-year-old Evan Moore is a designer. Since the age of five, he's been fascinated by the lights and has been producing holiday light shows ever since, simply for the feeling that it gives to the community and those that come from the dark depths to see it. I do it for the kids, you know. I see them out on the street dancing, you know, smiles on their faces. Um, definitely gives me a sense of joy. Every show is different, so visitors can get a taste of something new every night. According to Evan, he simply has to reorganize the layout and song selection so that the music plays in sync with the many lights spread around the home. Last year, I started working on this show. I built it up. Um, I went through all my computer software. I put out all the props that you see based on my computer, and I started programming each prop throughout the whole year and started building them. We have a whole brand new technology. Um, right now, for this Halloween light show, we have about 11,000 pixels and 33,000 channels running this year. And it's perfect for helping everyone get into the Halloween spirit, a reason why Evan enjoys doing this show year after year. For one thing, I feel accomplished, definitely. Definitely brings a smile to my face as well. Um, and it just motivates me to do more next year. Really, really incredible show you can go and check out there. Now, you'll be able to watch the show in person or online at Evan's YouTube channel. For more information, just head over to our website, HoustonLife.tv. Well, you guys, it's now time for quiz time. And today, we're playing Halloween by number. I will give the name of the Halloween topic. We have our contestants right here, and they will have to guess the correct number. Now, you're going to write your answers down in the dry erase boards, and then whoever gets closest without going over gets the point. Okay. You guys get it? All right, got All right, you're ready. Here comes the first a question right now, and it's all about my favorite holiday, Halloween. Okay. How much does one household spend on Halloween? Oof. Like decorations candy? and candy and all of it? Mm-hmm, everything together. Okay. Um, <laughs> and this is on average. And this is on average, yes. Okay. Oh, man. I don't know. Everything I'm is guessing. so expensive. All right, let's see. Days. Let's see those answers. Lauren has 100. $100. Derek has 120. So I'm going to give it to Lauren because it is 86 dollars and 27 cents on oh. average oh. celebrating Halloween. I think All I've right. already spent that so on Halloween candy. One for Lauren. Let's go ahead and erase <laughs> and move on to the next one. While you're erasing, I'm going to give you the next okay. question. So think and write at the same time. Okay. The second one. What percentage of parents admit to stealing their kids' candy? Not including me. <laughs> stealing? Stealing. I think I'm going to guess this. All I right. Mean, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and let's okay. see those answers. Lauren has 100%. Derek guessed 25%. Derek, really? Every parent steals their kids' candy. Okay, I so, mean, but if it's not stealing if the parent just asks and the child hands it over. Like, they're hey, not, can I this, no, this is true. happening at night while they're sleeping. Some of them are hiding those candies, too. <laughs> okay. So we're going to say it is 72% of parents admit to stealing candy from their kids. Oh, so, so Lauren, you were kind of close. You went over. Okay. But you know where Lauren is ahead, Derek. You're going to have to get her for the next one, okay? <laughs> I thought All right. it was the closest. No, 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 without no Derek. Going without going been, over. Yeah, so, of price course. Is right rules. All right, okay. so one and one. Yep, yep, All yep. right. Okay. It's a little low, Derek. We got to get a little higher than that. 25%? Really? All right. Well, the parents did buy the candy, <laughs> so true. technically it is it's sort theirs. of theirs. It's true. Okay, well, how many children's. pounds of pumpkins are grown each year? Oh. This is a good one. In the United States? In the United States. All right, let's see. I mean, this is... All right. Let's see. Hold on. Lauren has two million. Derek, what's your guess? I am writing five million pounds of pumpkins grown <laughs> annually in the United States. Okay, so Derek is closer because it is two billion <laughs> <laughs> pounds of pumpkin are grown in the United States every year. Two wow. billion pounds yes. of pumpkin. A lot of a lot of people love these pumpkins. You got to use them for that pumpkin spice lattes, all the good stuff. Oh, all yeah. right. Next question we have. We got, got a few more seconds left, so I can okay. give one more. What year was the term trick or treat? introduced to the United States. What year? Trick, Trick or treat? Oh, man. This is a good one. These this are some is good a questions. Really good one, Joe. These are hard. All right, let's see. Lauren is guessing 1928. Derek has 1925. Wow. wow. All right. So Derek is correct wow. because it is 1927 is the year that the phrase trick or treat was first appeared in the United States. How are we both that table? close? Y'all are really oh, good. That was pretty Do you have close. one more? That's impressive. All right. One more for okay, the win. Okay. All right. You guys are okay. ready? What percentage of people dress up their dogs? <laughs> I know you guys are going to have some good ones for this one here. All right, let's see it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Lauren has 90%. Derek has 80%. 80%. 
<sighs> Derek is the winner. Oh so, my gosh. <laughs> closest, of course, without going over. Guys, both went over because only 17% of people dress up their dogs for Halloween. You know what? I, I'm betting it because a lot of dogs do not like, like wearing, wearing costumes. costumes. They it's take true. them off, they rip them off. Yeah. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah. All right, <laughs> All right Joe. Well, yeah. congratulations, Thanks, Derek. Joe. Lauren, we're going to need some more work on the Halloween. Oh, don't Bring worry. Candy tomorrow. I'll share my candy with all of you. How about that? Yes. All right, Joe. Thanks for that. After the break, we are checking in with a familiar face, a Houston restaurateur who has a bar in Round Top that is unlike anything you've probably seen before. You might even want to stay the night. That's when Houston Life returns. Don't go away. Okay, we have moved around in the Ellis Motel. This, if you couldn't tell, is the Buffalo Room. I still have my spicy Paloma here. Newsflash, y'all, this isn't a hotel. It's not a motel. It's a place to get fancy cocktails when you're here in Round Top. Mm. A little sip. Let's go meet Lee Ellis because, you know what, I've known him for years, and this is one of the coolest spots here in Round Top. Lee, we are now in the Motorcycle Courtney. Room. How are you? Good, how are you? Mm, good it's so good you. to see you. Is that a COVID hug? No, I gave you a good hug. Hey, listen, Ellis Motel, newsflash, I thought it was a motel. Like, what? where have I been? You can make a reservation. You just can't stay. <laughs> I can come, but I got to leave. Hey, this is such a great spot. And tell me about just kind of growing up in this city because Round Top is really evolving. Well, Melissa and I moved out here about four years ago, so we just needed a change of pace. And there wasn't a place to hang out, so that's why the Ellis Motel appeared. And this is such a cool spot. Each room has a different theme. There's also cocktails. What else can we do here besides, you know, chill and you vibe get here? a lot of trouble. <laughs> well, you can buy some merch. And, and pretty much most of the furniture is for sale. And we've sold quite a bit of it and most of the art. You know, it's so cool because I know two weeks a year, four weeks a year, I guess I should say, two in the in the fall, two in the spring. Um, but there's so much more to do here even outside yeah, the festival. Yeah, absolutely. And the area is beautiful. It's a wonderful place to be. And just driving around is just, I mean, you know, every day I get to drive in this instead of driving in traffic. So it's a really special place. And I know for people, you know, maybe they're thinking, I want to come. I don't want to deal with the crowds. During the week is really the time to come here. During the week is the time to come. It's always been busy on the weekends but during the week here it's super mellow and during the show it's it's great to come out here you've got over 20 miles of venues to go roam around in and part of part of the the experience is also experiencing the, the crowds and and they're just fantastic they're all great people everybody's having a good time and it's just a great place to be well this is a great place to be i've always been a big fan of yours i know we've been friends for a long time i started with spicy paloma what should be next on my cocktail list today well my personal one is the pineapple chipotle coconut I think it's the cowgirl coconut. Is that what you girls named it? <laughs> Sign me up. It, it's my favorite drink. It's sweet, but then it has a great burn at the end of it. Okay, I like it. It's great to catch up with you. Congratulations great to on see this. Y'all, thank y'all so much for being here, and welcome to Round Talk. All right. Very, I love very nice. that guest. He it's, is so fun. I know. It is fun to see Lee. Yeah. It is fun to see Lee. All mm -hmm. right. After the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show when we head out on the waters of Galveston Bay, Lauren. Oh, yes. And as we head to break, let's check in with Nichelle Turner for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight, including the real reason a former View co-host made the choice to leave the show. Hey, Nichelle. Derek and Lauren, tune into ET tonight to find out why Angelina Jolie and Salma Hayek canceled their latest red carpet appearance. Plus, our Meghan McCain exclusive. She tells us the exact moment she decided to quit The View. That's tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC2. But don't go anywhere. Houston Life will be right back. Go!
Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, how to fish like a pro. We'll meet a local fisherman who started a guide service to help you get the most out of Galveston Bay. Plus, actress Greta Lee dishes on her role in The Morning Show and what it's like working with Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. The Morning so Show is so much fun to such talk a great to her. show. Yes. So, in case you all haven't seen it, this is Apple TV Plus and the first season uh, filled with so many twists and turns. Mm -hmm. And because we work in television, yeah. I always think these shows, like, it's so cool to watch them like wow there's a lot of drama behind the scenes but also but it's like that actually happens like they're <laughs> speaking our language you know what I'm saying it's, it's fun to watch them talk about that yeah what do you mean what do you mean no just a vocabulary behind the scenes just different <laughs> verbiage <laughs> that news people use it's fun to see them walk to I'm music. kidding <laughs> listen during commercial breaks we've been reading some of your viewer comments from our Facebook page thanks so much for sending them in thanks for all your Instagram notes as well and in the meantime Enjoy the slam dunk. It is a slam dunk. It I'm is gonna get slam drunk. <laughs> I'm totally get kidding. Drunk. I'm kidding. I'm definitely not kidding. <laughs> Enjoy it. 13 bucks from H uh, H E B. Excuse me. Yeah, Thirteen dollars. He's done. Cut off. I know. Uh, go Strohs. Go Strohs. <laughs> They're in Boston. Yay. Okay. I think our show's over now. <laughs> you guys are a stitch. Seriously. <laughs> Cheers <laughs> to you both. And go Astros. We'll go see you Astros, Andy, yeah. Christine. All right, guys. Thanks so much.